Insha'Allah, our next speaker, Sheikh Yasser Qadi from the USA. A brief background about Sheikh Yasser Qadi. He is a lecturer and Islamic orator who has authored several books about Islam. He is a popular speaker in many Muslim circles in the United States, Canada, England and Australia. He is one of the few people who has combined a traditional seminary training with Western education. Sheikh Yasser Qadi was born in Houston, Texas in the USA. He went on to complete high school in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia and worked for Dow Chemical for a short time. He then decided to pursue an education in Islamic studies and left for the Islamic University of Medina in Saudi Arabia. There he completed a second bachelor's degree specializing in the studies of Hadith and then went on to, to complete an MA in technology. Presently, he is completing his PhD in Islamic studies at Yale University in Connecticut, USA. Apart from his studies, he is also an active instructor with various Islamic institutes where he teaches theology, sira, tajweed and other topics and he also gives regular Friday sermons and lectures. Sheikh Yasser Qadi appears on a number of Islamic satellite TV channels such as Peace TV, Islam Channel in the UK, and Al Fajr channel in Saudi Arabia and Al Huda channel in Egypt. So I would like to invite to the stage to address us on the topic of Dua, the weapon of the believers, Sheikh Yasser Qadi from the USA. We began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be praised and by sending salat and salam upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's topic that I would like to address you with is the topic of dua and why we make dua and how we make dua and how we can better this dua that we make with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to talk to you about this topic through a very important story in the Quran. And that is the story of Adam alayhi salam and his encounter with Iblis in Jannah. This story is a story that is of crucial importance. And that is why Allah mentions it more than 10 times in the Quran. And he mentions it right at the very beginning of the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. And the story, a summary of it is that Allah created Adam and Hawa and he told them to live in Jannah and eat anything that they want and eat and drink and be merry, but avoid one tree, Allah said. And Shaytan became jealous of them. So Shaytan whispered to them to try to cause them to slip into the sin of eating from the tree. And because of this whispering, Adam ate from this tree and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused our father Adam to come down to this earth and Allah cursed Iblis until the day of judgment. This story you will ask what has this got to do with dua and today insha'Allah ta'ala in the next half hour I will demonstrate that this story teaches us the essence of how to make dua and why we make dua and the etiquettes of making dua. The first point that we derive from this story, Allah created Adam and Hawa alayhim as -salam, and he blessed them with everything. He blessed them with Jannah and he gave them clothes and he gave them food and he gave them everything that they needed. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the two of them, they did not ask Allah for anything. They didn't make dua for anything. Yet Allah still gave them everything. Without even asking, Allah gave. Without even requesting, Allah showed his generosity. And this shows us. Many times Muslims ask, why does Allah provide for people who make fun of him, who ridicule him, who reject him? 
Why does Allah provide for people who ascribe partners to him? And their response is, because Allah is the ever generous, the Kareem. Allah is the Manan. Allah is the Razak. Allah is the Rauf. Allah will give even without asking. Allah created Adam and Hawa. They didn't ask for anything. Allah still gave them. And Allah gave them everything. Because Allah is the Rabb, He provides for all the creation. Even if the creation rejects Him, He still provides. And this is a sign of Allah's mercy and a sign of Allah's generosity. And this is of course in this world. And as for the next, every man will be accountable for what he did in this life. The story goes on. And we know that Adam was given one commandment and Iblis was given one commandment. Adam was told, don't eat of the tree. Iblis was told, prostrate to Adam. Both of them were not able to fulfill their commands. Think about this. Both of them were not able to fulfill their commands. Adam eventually ate of the tree. And Iblis refused to bow down when Allah told him to do sajda. But what is the reaction of both of these people? The one of them, Adam, the other Iblis. What is the reaction? It is in the reaction that we see the difference between a worshiper of Allah and a rejecter of Allah. It is in the reaction that we see the mu'min from the kafir. It is in the reaction that we see the righteous from the evil and the wretched. Adam alayhi salam, when he disobeyed, he immediately made a dua. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Right then and there, he realized I made a mistake. Oh my Lord, we have made a mistake. We have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, if you don't have mercy on us, we will be of those who are misguided, who are lost. As for Iblis, Abba was takbar. He was arrogant and he refused. And in this reaction, we see the reality of faith. We see the reality of Iman. A mu'min does not become an angel. A mu'min does not reach the level where he does not commit sins. But rather when a mu'min sins, immediately he recognizes that sin. He acknowledges and understands what he has done. A mu'min, we can put it this way, a mu'min has a continual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a non-believer does not have that relationship. So this shows us that when Adam alayhi salam made a mistake, he immediately realized the mistake. And he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua. Therefore, dua is a sign of iman. Dua is a sign of iman. The one who makes dua to Allah constantly, frequently, it shows that he's following in the sunnah of Adam alayhi salam. And the one who refuses to worship Allah, the one who refused to submit to Allah, he is following in the sunnah of Iblis. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us that dua is the most noble act of worship. Dua is the most blessed act of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have told my servants to make dua to me. I shall respond to them. Those who are too arrogant to worship me shall enter the fire of hell. Two categories. Make dua to me, I will respond. Category one. Category two, too arrogant to worship Allah. There is no middle ground. Adam is in the first category. He made dua. Allah responded. Iblis refused to make dua. Abba was takbar. Therefore, dua is a sign of iman. Why and how is it a sign of iman? It is a sign of iman for many reasons. It shows that a person acknowledges that I have no control over my own destiny. I have no control, no power to benefit or harm me. I need you, O oh Allah, for each and every step that I take. It shows our poverty to Allah. It shows our need for Allah. It shows Allah's infinite mercy and care and love. When you make dua, what does this mean? It means, oh Allah, I know you hear me. That's why I'm calling out to you. It means, oh Allah, I know that you care about me. You love me. That's why I call out to you. 
It means, oh Allah, I know you have the power to give me what I want. That is why I call out to you. When you make dua, you affirm the perfection of Allah and you affirm your own incapacity, your own weakness. When you make dua, you are screaming out to the one entity that cares about you and loves you. You're calling out to that one being who is your Rabb, your sustainer, your master, your nourisher. And that is why making dua is a sign of worship and a sign of iman. It is a sign of tawheed. It is a sign of unifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no greater act of worship than dua. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ad-du'a mukhul ibadah Mukh means the backbone, the brains. Dua is the essence of worship. It is the backbone of worship. You cannot have worship without dua. And that is because as we said, it demonstrates the helplessness of man and the power and the mercy and the infinite knowledge of the Creator.